Yeah, good morning, church. <laughs> it is a good day to be in the house of God this morning. I'd like to also say greetings to our online family today. Such an honor to be here. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes, I'd like to open up with a word of prayer. Father, we just love you this morning. We thank you for all that you've already done in our life. You're such a good and faithful God. And we just continue to welcome you into this place, welcome you into our hearts, into our lives. Father, I pray that your word today would go forth and would be seed, Father, planted in our hearts that would continue to produce a harvest in our life for you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you have your Bibles with me, please turn to Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11, I'm going to read verse 1 through 3. And if you're new to Grace, we're going to have the scriptures up on the screen so you can follow along on there or on your Bible app or tablet. Um, on the Bible app, on your phone or tablet. Um, okay, here we go. Ready? Hebrews 11, 1 through 3. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. Verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. If you like to write in your Bibles, you can go ahead and underline by the word of God. So that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And the spoken word of God is the rhema word of God, right? Now, 2019 was a very difficult and tumultuous season, I would say, in our life personally. And then COVID hit, right? And the world went crazy. It went absolutely crazy. And um, I was like, really? Okay, God, we got this. Um, and it has been a really hard year for, I believe, many of us. Many of us have had a really hard year. And I've been saved most of my life, practically grew up in church. I'd be at church four times a week, hallelujah. And I say that just to say that I got a lot of word deposited on the inside of me. I came to know Christ at a very young age. So I knew enough, right, to where I was surviving the storm. I was surviving the season. But how many of you guys know that God does not want us to just survive the seasons of our life, right? His will is that we flourish, that we prosper, right, in it. He wants us to thrive in this life that we live. And so I knew enough to survive, right? But one of the greatest revelations for me has been that God is not the author of my storm, right? The Bible clearly says it rains on the just and the unjust alike. I love John 10, 10 because it says, the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that they may have life and that they may have life more abundantly. See, I feel like God gets a bad rap. So many people, when they cannot understand what's happening or the season that they're in or trying to explain things away, they tend to blame God. But very clearly it says here, it is the thief huh, that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And if what we are experiencing is contrary to the word of God and what we see, guess what has to change? Our experience. Our experience has to bow to the name of Jesus, to the power of God that lives and dwells on the inside of us. I'd like to read Isaiah 55, verses 10 and 11. This is so beautiful. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish, hallelujah, what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. 
The New American Standard Bible says, so will my word be, which goes from my mouth. It will not return to me empty without accomplishing what I desire and without succeeding in the matter which I sent it. What we were walking through church was not thriving. It was not flourishing. It was not prospering. I was surviving. I battled depression, grief, hopelessness, and heartache like I had not known. But notice, I said, I battled. I battled because church, I had enough of God in me that I knew I had to get in the ring, right? I knew that this was not his will for my life. I knew he had more. I read his word. I know what truth was. I knew scriptures like Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Hallelujah. Plans for good and not for evil, to give you a hope and a future. I knew 1 John 4, 4, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I knew Jesus said in John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble. But behold, right, he said, be of good cheer, take courage, for I have overcome the world. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. So I had a choice to make. And the truth is that we all have a choice to make in this life. Deuteronomy 30, 19 says, I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. But it says, therefore, choose life. The onus is on us. He says, choose life. And look at this. It says that both you and your descendants may live. Because it's more than just about you. It's about those that come after you. It's about those that surround you in the here and now that God has placed in your life and in your sphere of influence. Amen? Jesus came and he paid a very high price for our every victory on this earth. We must agree with heaven for our families, huh? for, our, for our children, for our spouses. We must agree with heaven for our deliverance for our freedom, for our prosperity in every area. It is the will of God. And it's just not speaking negative, church. That's great. <laughs> but I want to encourage you today to begin to speak truth, to speak truth over your circumstances, the truth that you see in this word. Reframe your world through his word. Amen. Earlier this week, I read Psalms, uh, Psalms 59, 16. It was in um, my, what's it, that verse they bring every, every day, daily verse. I couldn't even remember how to say it, but it came up and it was just so awesome. It was one of those verses where you're like, yes, God, yes. It's Psalms 59, 16. It says, but as for me, I shall sing of your strength. Yes, I shall joyfully sing of your loving kindness in the morning, for you have been my stronghold and a refuge in the day of my distress. And church, God has been my refuge in the day of my distress. Because like I said, I had enough word in me that I knew I had to get in the ring. So I got in the ring. If you could just picture, right, a boxing ring. I got in, I put my gloves on, I tightened those babies, right? Because I knew the word. I was like, okay, God, we got this, you know? And I'd start swinging, you know? God, I know I can do this. You are for me. I am more than a conqueror. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Then suddenly the enemy just came in like an uppercut, bam! And I was down, a swift kick to the head, and I was down for the count. I'm just laying there, right? And it's like I could hear this referee, you know, counting one, two, three, four, five, and I'm still sitting there. God, I can't do this. God, I can't take this anymore. I've got nothing left, God. And just feeling hopeless. And the enemy sees, man, when you're down and he comes in and he begins to bombard you with all his lies, right? But just around five, if you will, six, 
the Spirit of God just began and so often begins, right, to stir up on the inside of you, right? And you remember those words, those truths that you've read about. And so all of a sudden, here, here I am, okay, God. I know you've got me. I know that you are for me. And it's like this song just began to rise. And in my heart, the Holy Spirit has always ministered to me so often in song. And it's that one of my go-tos is God of miracles. And I would just begin, let faith arise. In spite of what I see, Lord, I believe. But help my unbelief, I choose to trust you. No matter what I see, let faith arise. And I love this part. For my champion's not dead, he is alive. Hallelujah. And he already knows our every need. And church, just as he rescued me, he will rescue you. God is faithful faithful and we must refuse to allow the enemy of our soul to deceive us with thoughts like this is never going to change it's always going to be like this it's hopeless i've got nothing more to give i might as well declare bankruptcy i'm headed for divorce those are the lies of the enemy and you must speak up the devil is a liar amen how many of you guys know that faith has an attitude and sometimes we just need to start snapping our fingers, what, swinging our heads, whatever you got to do, right? And start speaking the word over your circumstance, over what the enemy has brought, not God. He is not the author of our storm. If the season or circumstance you find yourself in is contrary to the word of God, then it's not time to throw in the towel or wave the white flag. It's time for you to wake up dust yourself off, right? Put on the whole armor of God, as Ephesians declares, right? That you may be able to withstand the wiles of the enemy. Trouble comes. Jesus said it. In this world, you will have trouble, but take courage because I have overcome the world. And we remind our soul how the story ends, amen? We remind our soul. I don't need to be afraid. Romans 8, 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? It's time to fight, church, and rightfully take our position. The blood of Christ has paid for it. I love Psalms 3.3. But you, O Lord, are a shield for me, my glory, and the lifter of my head. And I believe he's going around this room this morning, and he's lifting up the head of the downcast and the hopeless and the stressed out because he is a faithful God. If you want to take back and reclaim the ground the enemy has stolen or is currently stealing, the first thing to do, number one, is reframe your world with his word. Reframe your world with the word of God. Gain heaven's perspective. See truth. Believe truth. Speak truth. Hebrews 11.1, 1, as I read earlier, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. It's not a magic trick. Faith is real, as that verse says, it has substance, it is evidence, it just cannot be seen with your natural eyes. Some mistakenly think that faith is believing in some, that something is real when it is not. But that's not the case, right? That if we say it long enough and, and hard enough and, and loud enough, because I know some of us like to get loud, and that's okay, I have no problem with that, right? But it's already real, church. That's not true faith. True faith is believing and understanding that our, there are spiritual realities that do exist. They just exist in a realm that you cannot see with your natural eyes, right? You cannot see with or perceive with your senses what you see, what you smell, what you taste, what you hear, what you feel. For example, radio and television, right? 
They get signals, they exist. We plug things in all the time and boom, there's a picture on the screen and boom, we're listening to, to an interview. When we see and hear these signals is not when they become real. It was real before, it just existed in a realm that you couldn't see. And see, everything that Jesus has provided for you and me already exists. It's already real. It does exist, but it exists in a spiritual form that you can't perceive with your five senses. We must see it with our spiritual eyes. We must pray, God, open the eyes of my understanding. Help me see the truth. Faith is our spiritual receiver. It brings what is real in the spiritual, and it manifests it in the physical, in the here and now. Verse 2 in Hebrews 11 says, For it the elders obtained a good testimony. How many of you guys want to have a good testimony, right? I'm going to read verse 3 again. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. And I want us to grasp today the bigger picture. God wants to enlarge our world. He wants to reframe it into what he, from the beginning of time, wanted it to be. The enemy wants us to get lost in our current situation, in our current circumstance. But God is saying, come a little higher. Get my perspective. Know truth, huh? See truth. Know truth. Believe truth. Speak it. In the mix of the context of our life, God is at work, church. And if we belong to Christ, his word says that he makes all things, not some things, but all things work out together for good, for those that are called according to his purposes. In the midst of our circumstance, God is at work. Now, the enemy will do all he can to distract you, to intimidate you. The Bible says that he roams around like a roaring lion, but we know he is no lion. That says like a lion, and he's making a lot of noise these days, right? Trying to intimidate us trying to silence us, but no, we must lift our voice. We must gain a heavenly perspective. Amen. We need to say, not today, Satan. I don't know if you guys have seen those shirts, but I've seen these shirts that say, not today, Satan, exclamation mark. I need to get pastor to make some that say, not today, Satan, go gracechapel.com, yeah. right? <laughs> That would be awesome. In the context of our life, church, there is a message. There is a testimony. There is a message and a testimony that God would like to articulate through your very life. A masterpiece just waiting to come forth through the very thing that is trying to drown you. My bishop puts it this way, you have been framed for this, born for this time, for this season, amen? God's not caught off guard by the current situation in your life. COVID did not catch God off guard. He is still on the throne. And the good news, church, is that he is for you today. And we must learn to reframe our life just as God framed the world with his word. Not what we see, hear, smell, smell, taste, and feel. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. And we must frame our world, church. We must lift our voice and begin to frame our world through his word. If you're looking at your spouse, right, and you see him in a three by five frame, and you see in the word, this should be a 16 by 20, right? I say, you need to start speaking. You need to lift your voice and speak the word of God. Hallelujah. If you have a negative report from the doctor, you need to speak the word of God. I love this. Pastor Chuck from Cluiston had this quote. 
on Facebook this week. It says, your silence becomes a victory for the enemy. Yes. Hmm? Right. We cannot remain silent. We must speak and frame our world through his word. Amen. See truth, God. So we, have to, we have to open up the word of God. We're never going to see it if we don't open it up. But as we open it up, he begins to show us his promises. He begins to show us what his will is for our life, right? And then we can believe it, and we can sink our teeth into it, right? That's faith, sinking your teeth into that thing that you see in the word of God, that bulldog kind of faith. How many of you have ever seen a bulldog dog grab a hold of something? They get that lockjaw. There is no getting that thing out once that dog's got lockjaw on it. And that's how our faith needs to be. We need to get that lockjaw clamp on that thing, right? And speak God's word and declare it, right? We see it, we believe it, and we declare it. We speak it forth. We don't remain silent. We need to check ourselves and consider the words that are coming out of our mouth or not coming out, church. Are we coming into agreement with heaven or hell today by the words that we speak or by the words that we are not speaking? Our life has more value than we tend to realize, and our current struggle has a message that God desires to paint and reframe for the world to see his glory in us. Amen? The confusion, the pain, the heartache, that, that is not the message. And the life surrenders, a life surrendered allows God to paint that picture, right? So that he can receive glory. He desires to create a masterpiece out of our life. And church, it's not just a beautiful art piece. If you can just allow yourself to imagine the gorgeous frame that God has in mind, the creator of the universe, have you seen some of the things that he's created in this world? The mountains, right? The depths of the sea? Oh my goodness. He is awesome. He is the creator of the world. And he wants to create a masterpiece through our life. Hallelujah. We must declare God's word by faith. And through that, a message of hope is realized for the world. We cannot let the context of our life be the message. It's so much more. God chose you to be alive in this season, in this time, in the midst of all the crazy going on. He chose you right here, right now, for a purpose that is so much greater than what you can see, what you can feel, what you can smell, what you can taste. It is so much greater. I believe with all my heart that he has a remnant of people that he is trying to get a message through. And it's his redemptive work in our life through our journey on this earth. Number two, if you're writing notes today, know that God is good. Know that God is good. James 1, 16, 17 says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. My beloved brethren, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. We read over and over in scripture that God is good. And at first glance, we're like, yeah, of course, God is good. But notice in this verse, he added in the beginning, do not be deceived. And that was an interesting note for me. Do not be deceived. Every good and every perfect gift is from above. And I believe that that was put there because, like I said earlier, a lot of people and even ourselves at times, will blame God for the bad things that happen in this world. And he's saying, do not be deceived. Church, God is good. And that sometimes, God is always good. And we have to settle that in our hearts. If we question, 
that God is responsible with bad things happen, how can we believe him for good when we think he's the one that authored it? He's the one that brought it into our life. No, sir, we have an enemy. For example, if we think that God brought the sickness because he's trying to teach us a lesson, how are we to believe him for healing? In James 1.8, it clearly says that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways, and he should not believe or expect to receive anything from the Lord. God is good all the time, and every good and perfect gift is from above. Amen? Number three, reclaim your identity. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for him who knew no sin he made to be sin on our behalf, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Righteous, church, is our position in Christ. It's your position, and therefore the Bible says we can boldly come before the throne of God, not in condemnation, not in guilt with our heads down, right? No, our position in Christ is righteous. I don't care how good you are, there is no way that you would be able to stand before a holy God. He is holy and he is just, and you cannot in yourself come before him. But he says, come boldly before the throne of God, because it's in his righteousness that you come. If we want to reframe our world, our mindset must be renewed daily by the word of God, amen? We must be intentional about allowing God to create a masterpiece, a masterpiece through our life. Every battle we face, once it's reframed, hallelujah, has a message that God desires to bring to the world. What the enemy wanted to use for your destruction, God wants to turn around for good and for his glory, church. Amen. Don't get lost. Refuse to get lost in the context of your life. Know there's a message that will bring him glory. Amen. But you have to make a choice. The onus is on us. We cannot remain silent, church. We must speak out. We must speak his word. I want to encourage you. Allow God to create that masterpiece. Allow him to reframe your life with his word. Begin to speak it like never before and to speak over your family, your loved one, your circumstance. Reframe your world through his word. In closing, I want to read Hebrews 12, 1. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, yeah, hallelujah, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And I love this church. This is for you today. And let us run with perseverance, amen, the race marked out for us. Hallelujah. Let us run with perseverance. Hmm? The race marked out for us. Let us get in the ring and begin to do battle for what we know belongs to us. Huh? Every battle, every battle, the victory has already been attained. The greater one lives in you. The power of God dwells in you. We sang earlier, when he walks into the room, everything changes, right? And I want to encourage you and remind you, as I remind myself so often, guess what? When I walk into a room, his presence walks in with me. We are carriers, amen? We are carriers of his presence. And when we allow our spirit man huh, to rise up above our soul and take control, we allow his presence to come out of our mouth and speak truth. And we come into agreement with heaven 
there is a power, hallelujah, that comes down and begins to change. Amen? Everything. Everything changes. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes, I'd like to pray for you guys tonight. Maybe there's some territory that God is speaking to you about today that you need to reclaim. Hmm? Things that you've maybe said to, ah, it's always going to be like that. They're always going to be like that. Hmm? It's never going to change. Those are lies. The lies of the enemy. The greater one lives in us. And if that's you today, and God is just telling you, hey, there's some territory you need to reclaim. Maybe you just need to get in the ring. Maybe you are in the ring. Maybe you're just down like I was. <laughs> and God is saying, get up. I am here. I am for you. We can do this thing. Amen. I want you just to stand to your feet if that's you. If you want just a prayer tonight or today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to thank our online family today for tuning in. We miss you and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.